Hey, we've got the Ironman Raving Champion here. I just want to give a shout out to Basic Kid, the hardcore casual. Hey, 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 h
But no, Kakachi, he done well from what I saw. Again, half of these I got to look back on because as I was there, I thought it was a quite entertaining card. There was a good crowd there. It was about 12,000 people, maybe a little bit more. They had the uh, the back of the, the top stand was open. All the sides were closed off, but, you know, the bottom, the bottom, uh, sort of the bottom bowl was open. All the uh, the seats at the bottom, you know, they weren't all occupied. Like, you know, there were some empty rows here and there. Um, but for the most part, it was a pretty big crowd and they made a lot of noise. It was a good atmosphere for the most part. So I do want to commend Frank Warren on that and Queensbury. Like I said, I've got to watch it back to see how it translated on TV because I did see some people in my group chat talking, like, oh, no, this is a dead this is a dead card or these fights are boring or whatever, whatever. From what I saw, it, it didn't seem that way. So i got to review that. Um, so this Wednesday coming up, I'm going to do like a proper, like full on, uh, you know, talk about the card itself. Plus, obviously, the matchroom card. I've only seen, I've only watched the, the Terry Harper fight and the, um, you know, and the Kid Galahad fights. I, I watched them briefly this morning before setting back off for Manchester. So I can't give you any detailed breakdowns on them. Um, all I can say is that ultimately I predicted Terry Harper would win. I got that one right. Um, I thought that Galahad would win and I got that one wrong. Although the point deduction was the big killer in that because one of the cards was 114-114. That's with the point deduction, which means that Galahad would have actually won that fight i uh, would have won on that card 115 to 114 and on one of the other cards it was 114 to 113 which was six rounds even to both of them but with the point deduction um maxi hughes got the round so that would mean that that would have been a draw so the fight itself would have been a draw um so then that would have been you know a nothing result on the on the ticker the only other ones i was really surprised about as I said, I expected, I thought Raven would be the first girl to take out Juanini, but ultimately that was never a guarantee. And she is a, and Juanini is a very good operator. So, you know, I got to give her a props. But I was very disappointed that Amanda Serrano didn't get the job done against um, Sarah Mafood. Now, Mafood did, she came with a lot more ambition than I guess some would have suspected. And she showed that she is fairly tough. But, Amanda didn't cut off the ring enough. She was pot shotting rather than, you know, setting traps. She wasn't cutting off pathways. She was just allowing Mafood to, to, to run around the ring basically. And she was following her rather than cutting off angles or hitting to the body when, you know, she's trying to exit the pocket. It, it wasn't a very good performance from her at all. If I'm, if I'm being real, I mean, it was a comfortable victory, but in terms of what it could have been, it wasn't that. And, you know, for all the quote unquote knockouts and the heavy hands that she has, when you look at who she actually knocks out, there's very few, if any, top levels on there. The only one I can think of is Daniela Bermudez. And if I'm being real, the Daniela Bermudez knockout or the, the stoppage to the body, she hit her to the body. As I said, Daniela went down, couldn't, didn't get up. She got, she got counted out. And then within a month, she announces that she's taking a break because she's pregnant. So I still believe that she was holding some some remnants of child when she was in that fight. And that's probably what caused her to react the way to the body shots that she did. I'm not, you know, that's that's my opinion based on what happened afterwards. So, but when it comes to these, you know, these top level girls or these girls that are supposed to be near the top, just Amanda's just not getting them out of there. So. That's something I feel as if I might need to take more of a look into. Obviously, I've seen the record. I've seen a lot of her fights, but I might have to go back through them and actually analyze who were the girls she was taking up because Sarah should have been, that should have been an easy night's meal for her, to, to be totally honest, just in terms of what Sarah does and what she doesn't do. She doesn't hit that hard. She doesn't throw punches correctly when she's under pressure. When she, you know, when you exchange with her, like she visibly gets rocked on her onto her heels and you couldn't take her you couldn't take her out now sometimes that's just the case but i've seen it on several of her recent fights to make me say that something is either not right there or the optics are 
not what they should be so i'm gonna like i said i'm gonna uh, i need to watch that back again and maybe once on the replay my view might be a little bit different like i said come wednesday i'm probably going to put out two or three videos that day i'm gonna to have to be very active but one will be about the weekend's action and talking about everything in in tow and then last one last but i guess well not least but it's definitely going to be last for this video is talking about joseph parker and joe joyce now if you remember my predictions video first thing i did say is my caveat to everything is I'm doing this before I see people on the scales, before I see the weigh-ins, to see how they're looking. So I can only go by my general assessments of, you know, how I think these guys are going to operate. If I had have seen the weigh-in first and seen that Joseph Parker was coming in at 255, I probably wouldn't have picked him. I think... As big as Joe Joyce is, the the people that are gonna beat him outside of having you know crazy one punch KO power that he's not gonna be able to block, they have to be able to move and move consistently. So someone like a Frank Sanchez, someone like a Alexander Usyk, like these guys that just have incredible either work rate or they've just got sl slick feet, or Michael Hunter, like these smaller guys that can just get in and out. Those are the kind of guys that are going to cause him huge amounts of problems. Now, Parker at, say, 245, 246 would have been, I feel it would have been that good mix between the power and the movement. But it's, it looked like he was there just to try. It's almost like he wasn't prepared to go 12 rounds. He thought, I'm going to land on this guy early and I'm going to either damage him enough that I can take rounds off in the middle or he's going to go down within sort of the first six or seven rounds and I'll be cool. But Parker, from what I saw ringside, he looked visibly gassed from the second round. Now, obviously, Joe Joyce does put an immense amount of pressure on you, but it's just, you would think that seeing all of his fights, you know essentially how he's going to operate. You know what he does. You have to train for that. And I don't know if Parker was training to nullify Joyce's weaknesses and maximize his strengths or he was just training a general game plan and then he was going to do it on the fly in the ring but if that's the case that was the wrong decision um but shout outs to joe joyce because what he does he does very well he does very effectively the chin again stood up to some big shots sometimes during an exchange you know we took he took his licks he kept coming forward and he's very he's very his jab is actually a very deceptive weapon because his jab never comes from back at his shoulder. It never comes from the front of his head. His jab is always out here. It's never, it's always far out in front of him and it's almost like a pop and pop, like it never comes all the way back. So you never know how far away his arm is from his face. So when you're thinking, oh, okay, I'll try and get in front of his jab. No, his jab is almost there to stop you from being able to throw anything from the outside, which is very, which is a very um, skilled trait. And it also, it makes you keep second guessing and moving because it, it looks like it's closer to your face than it is before he starts actually throwing it, um, which was, you know, it was all a part of his tactics just to break, uh, to break down Joseph Parker. I'm not sure how Parker ended up getting the cut over the eye. I don't know if it was a shot or a head clash or something, but I think his nose was busted from sort of the second round as well. So, I mean, he was just slowly getting beaten up, beaten up. And then in the 11th round, you know, very leaky guard. I don't know if he was thinking he was about to try and set for a Hail Mary overhand, but, you know, Joe Joyce literally rotated his body like, you know, remember the Jack, you remember the Jack's android from Tekken where he, he turns his whole body and then swings at you? That's literally what Joyce done with this with this left hook. He corked, he corked it from back here and bang, on the chin, Parker's down. Like, yes, he managed to get up at like nine and a half, but by that time, you don't get up by eight in the UK. They wave it off anyway, but he was done. Like, he wouldn't have survived another round. So it, it was the perfect time for the fight to be over. Um, it was a very entertaining fight. It was a lot more entertaining than I think a lot of people thought it would be. A lot of people did think it was going to be like a boring snooze fest. It wasn't that. So um, maximum respect to Joe Joyce. Um, I always questioned what he would be like against the higher level guys because he hadn't seen it before. 
but he's shown that he is up in that higher echelon now definitely a top five in the world currently um it will be interesting as to who he's gonna fight next because he can't just wait for a title shot it won't he won't get one at till at least the start of 2024 i would think so i reckon he needs to have two fights next year again i think a good a good avenue for him would be a frank sanchez as a next fight um and then maybe after that you give him a softer touch maybe someone that's going to stand just stand in front of him you know and sort of let him just get a couple rounds off before getting that title shot who that is i don't know um i think joe joyce against martin bacoli would be a good fight i, I can see that one being being a very a very lively fight so uh, martin bacoli you know will test him you'll be able to see how well the chin does stand up to people that hit really hard um, but bacoli is there to be hit also um, there's not going to be a lot of movement it will be a very much a slugfest in the middle of the in the middle of the ring and you know toughest chin wins um but yeah i think a frank sanchez if he's gonna a lot of the the new the, the younger guys and the the best guys in the division the ones with the best feet i think frank sanchez has got some of the best feet so that will work to find out how well he can do with a really good mover um outside of that uh, otto valin fight would probably be a good one if maybe michael hunter dispatches of huey fury michael hunter fight or even a huey fury fight i mean there's there's loads of different uh, different avenues to go but yeah i um i've got to give him his props like he is the juggernaut for a reason i mean yes the amount of punches he takes is concerning and the chin will not last forever but while it's here and while he's here we're at least gonna have some some interesting and entertaining moments to go by but with that being said i got a duck because i'm going to a very special event which isn't my business to talk about but you'll probably hear about it um well from some other channels on here but for now that's the weekend sort of wrapped up oh well uh also big congrats to shakur stevenson for his victory we'll talk about the the missed weight later on in the week um but you know he dealt with robson conceição better than anyone else has um you know uh what's his name oscar valdez got a gift decision against him according to most people i've still yet to watch that fight just due to the whole drugs and you know sort of the the ped issue um so i, I chose as my protest not to watch it but by all accounts conceição dominated that um or at least was he should have been the winner but Shakur showed his skills and showed that he is leagues above of the majority of the division so I'm keen to see what he's going to do at 135 and I'll address everything else afterwards but yeah I'm going to shoot off thank you for watching and um yeah I'll catch, catch you on the next one